what's going on everybody uh welcome back to the bankroll challenge and uh i got some updates for you guys it's been a while i know um if you've been waiting for this episode i apologize uh, i got some updates i got to talk to you guys about so um i do want to say very quickly if you don't care about the updates you just want to see some gameplay and you want to learn more about poker uh refer to the timestamps below in the description because I'm going to be talking for a few minutes here, but I will have some uh, hand reviews as well as some, you know, very, uh, I don't know how to call it, like uh, high value content where I'm just going to talk about some things that I learned specifically that will uh, um, help you in your gameplay if you also implement them. So um, I'm going to get into why it's taken me so long to do this and um, just start talking about what's been going on. So um last thing real quick um i know i've been asking this a lot lately but the channel's been growing a lot and, and like subscribers and likes have been going crazy and you know i think it has to some do with something it has to do with the fact that i've been asking for likes so um if you like this kind of content please drop a like and if you're interested you are welcome to check out my links below if you want to support the channel in any way um the best way to do that would be for example like signing up for acr so um uh, i'm gonna get into it now so um, let's see what's been going on. So last episode, um, I was, you know, not, not fully in the swing of like being a full, like full-time poker player, you know, I have been in the past. And, um, when you are a full-time poker player, you, you get used, you get more accustomed to the ups and downs in my opinion. And, um, for me specifically, I have a lot writing on being a good poker player. I, you know, I'm making this YouTube channel. I'm growing my coaching business, and um, so what happened was I started running bad, and then my ego just got like completely out of control, and I absolutely could not handle that I was losing money because I'm like, um, you know, I'm supposed to be this poker coach. I'm I've got this YouTube channel. Um, if I don't have this, you, you know, I quit my job. Um, uh, it's, it's not like it was like a corporate job it was a crappy job <laughs> but you know I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in on poker and then I was losing money and it was just like driving me insane because I was running bad I was losing money and then on top of that I started playing way worse because I was on tilt but also I'm like but I need to make money so I need to keep playing poker and um, it was just a very bad downward spiral and this happened over the course of like three days and my bankroll went from like 400 something to like $125 or something like that, which is just absolutely horrible. Um, you know, I was kind of taking a shot in terms of bankroll management at 25 and L and that's fine. You know, that's, that's how I've made all my money in online poker, um, over the years is like 25 and L full ring is like so profitable. But, um, like I said, I was just playing really bad, running a little bit bad and, um, things weren't really bad. So I, I stopped making these bankroll challenges cause I was like, I have to figure out what the heck's going on. So that's what I did. You know, I looked deep within myself and asked, you know, I reflected, you know, why am I on tilt so bad? And, you know, basically the answer I came to is what I just told you, which is like, I had so much writing on this channel and like my poker success that it was just very hard for me to handle losing. And so I had to confront those like demons, I guess you could call it, just confront my ego and say, you know, look, man, just because you feel like you and you're entitled to make money playing poker and you have to do it doesn't mean you deserve it just because you want to. And I think that's an important lesson a lot of us can take home. Um, it's which is um, just because you feel you deserve to make money in poker doesn't mean that you you actually do deserve it. You still have to make plays at the end of the day. You know, for example, if you're a professional athlete, just because you've made it in the past doesn't mean you don't have to prove yourself today. You have to prove yourself every single day and play well every single day, and that's how you make money. And, you know, I'm never going to forget that lesson. I still go on tilt from time to time if I'm running bad, but um, I know to take a step away, remember what's actually going on. It's just, you know, there, there's always going to be ups and downs in poker, but um, the important thing is not to get too attached to the outcome and start playing differently. You have to keep playing well. And, uh, you know, that, that's something I'm never going to forget, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, basically, like I said, I, I dropped my bankroll all the way down to like 150 or something, 140. And that was about two weeks ago. And since then, I have been grinding 10 and L. Uh, a lot of you may have seen my 10 and L 
um, like kind of like informational strategy video and uh, which is doing very well. So again, thank you guys so much for all the support on all these these latest videos. I, I really do appreciate it so much. But um, that that last video, um, you know, kind of showed that I'm up like 22 buy-ins in a week and um, that continues to grow. I keep making money at this uh, at, at 10NL Zoom and um, you know, things are going well, I'm playing well and um, just starting to understand really how these regs work. <laughs> you know, how, how to beat them consistently and also just how to improve at poker. So that's, that's how things have been going. And, um, the bankroll right now is at, I just played a little session cause I wanted to get some gameplay. So it's up 10 more dollars. So the bankroll now should be around 550, 554 99. So that's obviously great news that considering I was at 150 about two weeks ago, um, in terms of returns, you know, it's really hard to do anything and get that kind of return on your money. So uh, I'm thrilled about the results. Obviously, you, you, you can't run really bad and, you know, triple your, your bankroll. Obviously, I've had to run pretty decently or good, um, which I definitely have. I've, you know, I've sucked out here and there. I've also been sucked out on, but I'm not running terrible by any means. So, um, you know, things are going pretty decent in terms of that. Um so the next thing is how I'm currently, so I'm going to talk about strategy now and what I've been doing to make money playing, playing these stakes. Um, so let's see. So one, one aspect is rake back. So, uh, well, you can't see this cause I, cause my camera's on right now, but basically I have another $50 sitting, um, in my account, uh, from rake back that I haven't redeemed yet. So I could actually put my bankroll over 600, um, at this very moment um but there is some incentive to hang on to your rake back because you get better um like return on it as you because you get points and so i'm actually holding on to my rake back right now and um but for the record i could be over 600 dollars right now and so um there's also this other um progressive what is it what, what is the term it's some like rake back leaderboard thing called the beast on acr and um, if you are a mic micros grinder, you if you play a decent amount of volume, especially if you play 25 and L, you can very easily get onto this beast leaderboard and make an extra $50 a week. Um, so if you're already a profitable player, you can um, significantly increase your win rate, not win rate, but you know, um, you know, income, I guess, by getting on this beast leaderboard. And that's what I've done three times now. So that's how I've, you know, effectively tripled my bankroll or 3.5 it, whatever it is now. Um, yes, I've won a ton of money, a ton of that money playing the games, but I've also made a good amount from the beast. And um, I just got paid again on on Saturday for last week. And it, I tell you what, man, that like it boosts your bankroll so fast when you're dealing with these micro stakes. So if you are... Um, if you are on ACR or you're considering ACR, um, that's a really great opportunity for micros grinders. And I got there playing 10 and L zoom. So if you just grind 10 and L zoom two tables for like six hours a day, you'll probably make the leaderboard and you'll probably make that extra 50 bucks. Um, and, and like I already said, if you're playing the 25 and L and you're playing like six tables of nine handed or something, a, a few hours a day, you're definitely going to get it. I think, so you just have to contribute a certain amount to rake back and get on that leaderboard. So if anyone's interested, I can do a more detailed explanation of this and like do another video specifically on the beast and like how I've made money using that. But, um, that has been really helpful. Like I said, $150 out of, you know, 550 is like a really big deal. It's, it's huge. I don't know the percentage, but that's obviously uh, quite large. So uh, the next the next concept I'll talk about is um, the best games that I find on ACR for a micros grinder like me. So um, the best games I have found are 25 NL uh, nine handed. Now the six max games might be better, but I haven't played them. I've just been playing exclusively like a little bit of nine handed 25 NL and all six max zoom uh, 10 NL. So um, 
here's the thing is like if you grind six-handed you're going to become a way better poker player you're going to learn all these spots and learn what to do and like how to be aggressive and all these concepts but it, it's definitely not like the easiest games so um, basically I went back to 25 and L full, full ring because I was actually trying to make sure I get onto the leader leaderboard for the beast, which I was just talking about. And I just sat down at a few nine handed handed games for 25 and L. And I tell you what, like these guys got it in so bad. And I just, I, I just, I scooped them, you know, I just, I just made a ton of money off of these guys, like a ton of buy-ins, not even a ton of buy-ins, like four buy-ins or something. But again, like these are these are significant when um, you're kind of shot taking at the micros. So um, basically, what I'm saying is, if you want to play the best games, I really recommend um, nine handed twenty five and L on ACR, and also six max zoom on the weekends ten and L is like there are there's still a ton of fish. Like um, again. Once again, you know, I said that in my 10 and L strategy video, but if you do, if you didn't watch that, or you just want a reminder, um, Thursday through Sunday, like there are like a ton of fish, um, Monday through Wednesday, not so much, but, um, you know, I've made, I've made some pretty decent money on there, you know, somewhere approaching $10 an hour playing 10 and L is like pretty darn good. Um, so you know, just keep that in mind. If you want some easy games, there, there's a lot of fish on ACR. Um, and then I already made this point, but it's in my notes, so I'll talk about it. And, um, you know, if you want to be improving, um, I just cannot recommend 6 Max Zoom enough. Um, and that's, all, that's all, I, all I can really say about that. You know, it's made me into, like, the poker player I am. Being in all these spots, I continue to learn new spots every day. And um, just continue to get like more and more profitable, like l know how to play hands differently. So I can't recommend that enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about um, kind of like some of the things I've learned over these last few weeks of playing, because um, if, you, if you can kind of like uh, integrate these ideas, then you may be able to improve your win rate um, like I have. So, um, w one of the biggest things that I've learned is that there's a huge edge in post flop play for six max. So basically like people's poker strategy is not very deep in general. And, um, especially when you're playing like these micros players, like I think this, like the standard protocol is that people just play like mostly tight aggressive and then they have like a few things they do post flop but after that there's like nothing but like there's nothing there's nothing new is what i mean so what you can do is you can develop like post flop play um just learning about like certain like frequencies and tendencies that people have and by doing that you can you know i said this in my 10 nl video again you know i keep referencing that video but it's like you can you can get so much mileage out of playing the player as, as opposed to playing GTO that, um, you know, I just think that's the, I think that's like one of the biggest edges in poker. Um, now, obviously the biggest edge in poker is always going to be having a huge skill gap on like really fishy players and big games. Like that's obviously where you're going to make the most money, but it's like when you're, gr when you're just grinding, um, the best way to do it is like, you have to do something like very, in my opinion, you have to do something very different from the competition and you have to stand out and like beat, you know, do what you can to beat everybody. And all I'm saying is the best way to beat everybody, in my opinion, is to um, become developed where they are undeveloped, which in, in this case, it's like post flop play. So um, that's, that's one of the things that I've learned. Um, and really quickly, I'll just give an example of that is one thing I, you know, people like love to three bet, but then they don't really barrel too much in six max 10 and L. And so what I do is I, I open a wide, wide range of hands and like I call a wide range of th three bets, especially from aggro players. And what that does is like when, when you have like aces, kinks, queens, jacks, all, all of these hands in your calling range, um, you become very hard to play against. So that's kind of like you know, a sneak peek into my strategy a little bit, um, especially because, um, you know, I will four bet a ton, but 
it's just worth saying these things because um i don't know like i said when when you have those things in your in your range and you know how to play against certain players um that's just like where i find a really big edge so um the other edge is with exploiting regs so this is is something i was i was already talking about in terms of like um Uh, like understanding tendencies and, and things like that. So, um, you know, this is just a fundamental part of poker is like, if you want to create a big edge for yourself, you have to um, play exploitatively against people who you, who you know, and you have to like outsmart them. You have to be on the next level. Um, I think that's kind of where a lot of po- poker players go wrong is that they, they understand that their opponent is a certain way but then they don't take the adequate next step and then they get frustrated that they don't beat them. But what you, you have to be a responsible person and say, I see what they're doing. And not only do I understand what they're doing, but I'm also going to take the appropriate steps. And that's being like a responsible player and not, not just like kind of hoping that because you have a read that they're going to play a certain way, you have to actually implement a good strategy after that. And, um, when I learned that lesson in poker, um, I can tell you I just started making so much more money. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, do a few hand reviews because I don't want to do a bankroll challenge without doing um, hand reviews. But um, I'm also going to show you guys uh, my where my bankroll is at. And I'll also show you my graph. So I, I already told you about, um, well, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, pull this up really quick. Okay, so um, right now we're just gonna be taking a look at the bankroll. Um, I'm just making sure. Okay, we're gonna do bankroll really fast and then we're gonna do um, some hand reviews. So I did just wanna show you guys like my graph. So basically the since date, so I'm I'm looking at my results since um, September 20th. Um, September 19, 18 and 17th is when I uh, tilted off my whole bankroll, which is what I was telling you guys about in the intro. I'm yeah, I, I could show you guys that, but it's, it's basically like, it's just like a minus $300. Yeah. So it's like exactly about $300. And if I look at like my 25, 25 NL, yeah, you can just see, I, I just lost so much money, got it in bad constantly, um, ran bad, got it in bad, um, all in F- equity, 43%. It's like, I wasn't getting it in good. I wasn't running yeah, I was running bad, but it's like, I was just on mega tilt, but, um, you know, that's, uh, that's poker. You have to be able to conquer these things. But, um, if we look at my, you know, my 10 and L zoom, which is where I've been focusing, you know, 60 hours of gameplay, $320 made. And also a ton of like almost the exact, almost the same amount I've made, you know, two thirds of that has been in, um, rake attribute attribution. Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, yeah, probably attribution, but, um, the good news about this is that as I move up in stakes, um, my, like, even if my big blinds per 100 stays, um, the same, um, uh, I'll make, I'll make like more money because the percentage of rake is going to be smaller and the games are just going to be bigger. So that's good news. But I did want to show you guys this. And then also, um, you know, here's my balance five fifty four ninety nine. Like I said earlier, and I was talking about combat points, so here we are. Um, this is about fifty dollars worth of rake back that I can redeem at any time. So I just wanted to show you the bankroll really fast. All right, so we're going to be looking at um, a few hands here. Um, my apologies for this like very unorganized layout, but um, you know I I don't know a great way to you know record without um, getting really complicated with like OBS and. Hopefully you guys will forgive me for being a little disorganized. Um, I guess part of me is just too lazy to give you better content. Um, But like I said, hopefully you guys can forgive me. But we are going to be looking at this. uh, This is just one hand of a few that I'm going to be looking at. So um, basically, I'm just going to give an explanation of like my thought process in the blinds. Um, So you know, for some reason, I've just had an obsession with playing the blinds well. And um, I I feel like I have an, quite a large edge in these spots. 
especially against the regs. So um, here we're going to open up a seven, which is just a pure value raise. It's like it's ahead of, you know, some percentage of hands, most hands. It's ace high and a seven is by no means a bad hand. Um, so we are playing against a reg here. You can see we've got over a thousand hands with him and he's got a 8% three bet frequency, which is not high by any means, but it is high for this stake. And also, um, I do want to say, uh, okay, we're waiting for it. So, um, it, when you're playing against a reg who knows that you raise a lot, that means he's going to three bet you a lot. And basically my attitude going into this hand was like, I know he's going to, cause we've been playing pots the last 20 minutes. We've played, you know, thousands, a thousand plus hands together. And I knew that he was like very willing to three bet me light. And because of that, um, I, you know, I have not been three betting and four betting this session. You can see I've got zero, zero on both of these. And, um, just in general, I keep my four bet range fairly tight. Um, I, I have very few bluffs in there. Um, unless unless I have like a good reason to deviate from that. So um, given these factors, um, I was basically just gonna say like, I was just gonna raise, I basically like snap four bet, not snap. I thought it was, I thought it was a more of a snap four bet than this. So, you know, my memory is not serving me perfectly, but I, I was, I would, I was just thinking to myself, you know, Wario, you know, he's, he's fairly aggressive and um, he's a reg. And he knows that I'm willing to open light. And so I just felt like it was a profitable spot. I honestly did not have a plan for um, dealing with a five bet, but I, like I said, I was just fairly confident for whatever reason in my read that he was going to do that. And um, in this case, uh, we take down a quick nine big blinds, which is absolutely awesome. So we're gonna be focusing on the right screen here. Um, basically, we've got pocket nines and a three bet pot. Um, so this is, I'm going to be talking about a mistake I made because I lost a pretty big pot and, um, you know, I think it's worth to, worth it to talk about the hands that I lose as well. So, um, basically we're playing against ATX and in, in my, uh, color coding system, blue, you know, blue is tight, uh, tight passive, which, um, isn't necessarily true if he has a three like you know a three aggression frequency he's not that passive and as you can see he barrels fairly often with um, 71 c bit percentage on flop 83 on turn and 50 percent on river so he actually barrels a good amount um so i guess what i'm trying to say is first of all i probably shouldn't be calling pots you know calling calling three bets and then continuing in hands against someone who has a, a tight three bet and a high barrel frequency, because that means they usually just barrel their big hands, which is like, is that surprising <laughs> at all when I end up losing this hand? No, it's not. <laughs> so um, basically, I think I I think it's fine to call the flop here. Um, you have an over pair, maybe as ace king, but um, at the same time, if he barrels and his, his his three betting range is so tight. It's like, he's always barreling his big hands and like, yeah, sometimes he has ace king, but he also always has jacks plus tens plus. Um, for this reason, I don't mind a check fold here, you know, try to set mine and, um, you know, just leave it there if you miss and just fold. Um, but you know, this is a bad, this is a hand I played poorly. So, um, I do want to talk about it. So we check all the flop. Um, we check the turn, um, pretty much never see myself leading out here unless I'm trying to represent eights or something. And then he checks the turn. So in my head, what I start to think is like, okay, what hands do that? Um, like ace king of diamonds, um, which got there, you know, what bluffs can I really beat? Um, only really ace king, ace queen, but he has all of his value hands in his range still. Um, it's a little bit nitty to check the turn in my opinion. I guess he just given me respect and he's not sure if I have him beat um, Which is again kind of nitty because it's like I only have sixes eights and deuces here That really have him beat um, But like I said, I think he has a ton of value hands in his range and he also just has diamonds now so 
when he bets um when he bets 20 big blinds it's it's quite valuey, you know it's like if he was trying to bluff you know maybe maybe he bets big to try to fold me out but when he bets 20 big blinds it's like he's definitely looking for a call <laughs> and i just you know i just give him the money and like i said there's so many value hands in his range and whatever bluffs he may have had probably just got there or like oftentimes just got there and so um i just don't think calling is very profitable here at all and um as you can see we're just absolutely crushed by queens and if all we have to do is look back at his his three bet percentage which is which is only four it's very very low so it's like yeah sometimes he bluffs here maybe but how often is that if you're only three betting four percent of hands it's just such a small small amount of the time that he's going to be bluffing so it's like if i'm going to be playing this hand i think i need to be playing it aggressively or folding but calling with nines for value is just not the play so i wanted to talk about this losing hand okay so now we're going to be talking about the last hand that we're going to be reviewing today which is going to be queen eight suited in the big blind um, i like to have a quite wide but also quite strong calling range in the big blind because people love to barrel off as you will f soon see and this is you know this is just um, an example of um, the fact that even like tight aggressive or tight passive players can get really out of line and um, this is why you you should just always try to think things through as best as you can is because you there aren't any like set rules in poker because people spaz out um, everyone sp I spaz out sometimes so um, the reason I say this is because we're looking at a tight passive player that's blue who is actually tight passive unlike the other guy the other guy's more tight aggressive but he's got you know a you know a two aggression frequency is just like about about normal maybe slightly more aggressive but he only see bets flop 40 percent doesn't see bet turn so doesn't three bet doesn't four bet so it's like this guy seems pretty passive in general but the thing is, is that this is what I keep telling you guys is that people just get so crazy in the blinds and they just love to just barrel off. And um, another, well, this is just a tell. When someone raises to five blinds, um, I don't know what you guys think about that, but that's very weak to me because if you if you have kings or aces you and you don't have a history with someone, you want to just make it 2.5 or three big blinds because you just want to build a pot. Um, if you raise to five, it's like, I'm just going to represent strength by betting big and hope you fold, which just doesn't make sense to me. So, you know, we're pretty fairly deep stacked, um, you know, 135 blinds, 165. So I was just like, well, I'm going to call and try to hit top pair. That's pretty much my whole thought process. And we are fortunate enough to flop top pair. This is a pretty nutted board for us, honestly. Like there's just so few hands beating us. And um, another thing is that he is likely to he is likely to bet a lot of draws on this board because Jack ten, King ten, King Jack, um, even like Ace highs, you know, heart draws. There's so many things that probably just want to continue here after you make this after you make this like silly five big blind open. He's probably just like, well, I have to barrel all my hands now. That's probably just going through his head. So I'm just like, well, I have top pair and there's a lot of draws, so I'm just gonna call. And then um, he makes another three quarters pot bet, which I'm just like, I just absolutely don't buy it. No one, like he's representing kings and aces or like jack 10 of hearts specifically. Um, no, If he had pocket nines, he's not betting this big. Um, if he has pocket sevens, maybe he would bet this big. Um, but mostly he just has a bunch of air in his range. So I'm just like, well, I still have top pair and uh, I just don't believe you. So I call him there and then we get to the river. And so here's the thing. He's going to absolutely bomb it. Come on, Winky. I'm checking out his stats, seeing how much he, how, how often he like bombs it. And he, he does, he, he fa fires the last barrel. And I'm just thinking to myself, is this how Kings play? You know, he's basically repping, repping Kings here. 
uh, kings kings aces, uh, maybe ace queen, maybe ace queen, and I'm 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 aware that I'm losing to ace queen here, but who plays like this? You know, I could be slow playing a set, and you're you're telling me you're so confident in your hand that you're willing to bet over pot, and you think I'm gonna call with a worse hand? It's like it just doesn't check out to me. You know, you raised five big blinds. You know, this this hand is just so damn fishy, and I have top pair. And every draw missed. So, uh, you know, it was a beautiful run out and I just, I'm just not buying it. So I kind of just say like, well, if you got it, you got it, but I have top hair and you, you smell like you're full of shit. <laughs> so, um, you know, given everything I've talked about in this hand, I decided to make the call. It's a, it's a big call. You know, this would definitely put us, um, into a losing sh session if we were to lose this hand and it's like I don't want to get into a losing session no one no one likes going from positive to negative but I just say you know there's just too much stuff that just whiffs and it turns out he just had complete air not even a pair not even a draw just a 10-4 of spades so he was just crushed the whole way and um, what is he drawing dead on the turn so it's like you know this this is a tight passive player playing like a maniac, and I just said enough. <laughs> I got top pair, so um, once again, even tight passive players can spaz out, especially in the blinds. People love to spaz out in the blinds, so keep that in mind. And um, that is the last hand for the hand review. All right, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed um, this update on the Bankroll Challenge. Um, you know, things have been going quite well. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, we are definitely not running bad. We've we've had some run bad spots, but we've also had a lot of run good spots. You know, we could easily be down like, I don't know, four or five buy-ins if we didn't like catch some sets, getting it all in bad. So I'm, I'm not uh, above saying that I've been getting lucky a little bit. Um, but that isn't to say that we've been, we haven't been doing a ton of things right and also taking advantage of the beast. So once again, um, if you want to sign up for ACR, you could you could do that through the link below. Um, that would support my channel. Um, and they also have a really great um, promotion where you get up to like $2,000 um, matched. So if you wanna take advantage of that, take advantage of the beast, um, you can check that out. But um, that's all I really have to say for today's video. I know it's really long, but I feel, I felt that telling you guys all of these things and being very transparent about this whole process will be, uh, you know, hopefully gain trust from you guys, but also help you out in your poker journey. Um, hopefully, you know, you see me going through these hard times of like confronting my ego and, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges in poker is that, you know, that's why a lot of people are so bad is that they have these huge egos about winning, I guess, in poker but they're not good poker players. And like, that's why poker is so profitable. It's because you have a bunch of egomaniacs playing poker, but um, that is going to wrap up the video. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. And um, let me know in the comments, if you have any requests for videos, um, I, I like making videos, but I don't always have great ideas. So if you just have any questions, let me know and I'll, I'll try to make a video on it. So thank you guys a ton for all of the support. I know I've said this so many times, like three times now, but it's like this channel is just growing so quickly. And I, I've, you know, frankly, I've dreamt of having like a good, like a nice YouTube channel, like a cool community and everything and everything's going really, really well. So I just appreciate that so much. Um, and uh, yeah, so just thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.